My name is Boyd Sharp. I'm 39 years old. I'm an IT guy. <laughs> Working in an office all day, and uh, I am in the biggest rut. I need a reason to get out of bed in the morning, and uh, I don't have it. Yeah, yeah. Boyd has no background in mixed martial arts, but somehow he came up with the idea of, hey, I want to try this. Here we go, here we go. Oh, yeah. hard here, let's go. Yeah. I've never been in a fight in my entire life, but in one year, I'm going to get in a mixed martial arts cage and fight a professional fight. You better get up and fight. When I told people that I was going to do this, they said, A, you're nuts, and B, can I come too? You better get up and fight. I'm just trying to show that ordinary people, when they put their minds to it, can do extraordinary things. Steve Goodfellow just had his first professional fight, and it didn't end well. He remains unconscious and immobile on the cage floor. Steve's fight is a brutal reminder that a professional cage fight can be very dangerous. After five minutes, which seems like a lifetime, Steve appears to be all right. Before the fight, the only time I can ever recall having that kind of anxiety is back when I was going in for surgery to have my colon removed and there was the fear of having an ostomy for the rest of my life if it went poorly. In this case, being backstage and having the commissioner say, it's time, and you realize that my performance, what I'm gonna do in the next few minutes is gonna dictate success or failure, but more importantly, it's, it's all about survival. It, it was gonna be the closest thing we have in modern times to a gladiator event. Put so much into something for such a long period of time and to have it end the way it was, was, was devastating. Sorry, Peter. Don't say sorry, buddy. I don't, it, it doesn't matter to me whether you want to lose, as long as you win, do your best. That's it. You do it for yeah. yourself, bro. You do it for yourself. You're doing good, buddy. You're doing good. Yeah. 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 Sorry, it. it was the scariest moment of my life, but at the same time, it was the most euphoric. Just the toughness of it all makes you realize in life that so many of the other problems you have that you think are insurmountable no longer seem that insurmountable. And once I came to that realization, man, I have, I have no problem getting up in the morning and looking in the mirror and holding my head high. Steve is one of three 40-year-olds who made it to the end of the one-year program and were chosen to fight. The other two, Boyd Sharp and Rick Doyle, are about to step in the cage, knowing their best friend just got knocked out. The minute we walk into that cage, we won. Because we did something that 250 or... 300 people that tried out for this couldn't do. Yeah. After years on the pro wrestling circuit, Rick was working a dead end job and felt he needed a change. I really don't have a goddamn clue why I'm here today. I'm 40 years old, my body's breaking down, my life's in the shitter right now, quite honestly. I need to find some answers, and I think this is the way to do it. Come on, hard, punch, hard. He is terrible. He makes Boyd look like a professional Muay Thai fighter. Rick was also reclusive. He passed on all social events with the Cubes, including skipping the important practice weight cut. I don't mean to be antisocial, but uh, I want to be by myself. This is a lonely road for me. I train alone, I suffer alone, and I'll fight alone. Eventually, Rick's attitude shifted. He developed close friendships with Boyd and Steve. At the start of the program, if I had to vote looking around at who I'm least likely to go have a beer with, it would have been Rick Doyle. And right now, who I'm most likely to go and have a beer with is Rick Doyle. The changes in Rick's attitude changed others' attitudes toward him. That's it. Uh, uh. You are as tough as I've ever seen. You've got as much heart as I've ever seen. 
And when Rick learned he had to cut 15 pounds in 24 hours to make weight for his fight, his teammates were there for him. During the hours in the sauna, Rick sweat out his old attitude, finally realizing the importance of a team. I could have done it with him, and uh, I'm ashamed of myself. I'm ashamed of myself, my way of thinking. This is a team sport. I didn't realize it until now, what it is. The Rick Doyle waiting for his fight is a very different man than the one who started the program. When I was laying on the floor in that sauna, I knew that I was pushing myself to the absolute. There's, you couldn't have pushed me any harder. There's nothing you could ask me to do that was any harder than getting through that. And uh, I'm going to walk into the biggest physical battle I've ever fought in my life. But I just fought a bigger mental battle with myself. I feel great. I'm not scared. I'm not, you know, I'm completely at peace with myself right now. <laughs> Rick is the only natural born fighter in this program. It's just one more little mountain for guys to climb up. They've trained so hard, they've dieted, they've put themselves through hell, and now there's one more little hell you have to go through. Win or lose, this is what you train for, and you get to do it. So you go in there and you do your best to put him on his back and put him to sleep. Okay? <laughs> Rick's year of training meant a year living away from his wife and two children. But they're here to cheer him on. With a year of total transformation behind him, former professional wrestler Rick Doyle is having his first professional fight against a very experienced opponent. Go, Ricky! Utah, baby, Utah! Come on, Rick! Breathe, breathe! Rick's experienced opponent knows Rick's chance to win is by knocking him out. He's fighting safely, keeping Rick tied up for the majority of the five minute round. Come on, Rick, let's go, you gotta hit him. Rick, you gotta hit him, let's go. Okay, buddy. Give me a towel, towel. Give me a shirt, give me a shirt. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy please. You're doing good, buddy, you're doing good. This is the toughest guy. All the guys they fought, you made it in the second round already. You're doing good, okay? Push him up there. There you go. Push him, turn! Turn, 
Like he always does, Rick gave it everything he had. But the referee stopped the fight halfway through the second round. Oh, it was great. They, they stopped it faster than what I thought. Like, I really didn't take that many hits down there. Like, I wasn't hurt, I was fine, but I guess they err on the side of caution. But it was fun as fucking hell. Good job, buddy. Good job, buddy. After the fight, I felt like I was just getting going. You know, it was, uh, I wasn't hurt, I was fine. And I, honestly, I was just getting warmed up. That was a typical Friday night down home, so uh, I was good to go. I had all kinds of energy. Could have fought four or five more rounds easily. Rick wants to keep fighting, but now it's Boyd's turn. This program exists because of Boyd's dream, but no one knew if Boyd would ever be good enough to fight. I personally thought that you know, he probably isn't going to be one of the guys to fight. A, because I didn't know if he had it in him, and B, because I didn't think he'd ever develop enough skills. You believe in yourself? You think you can do this? I don't know. Boyd gets put down, I would say, in sparring more than anybody else in the program. He gets hurt. I just think his heart's too big for his body. I don't know how he's going to make out in the cage. If he makes it that far, I kind of worry about him. I have seen him beat down, squirming, crying, dragging himself around the mat, and he just doesn't quit. I actually text him all the time and say, will you just please quit? I can't watch you anymore, and he won't. But it was the inspiring trip to the Henzo Gracie Academy in New York that turned the tide for Boyd, along with the constant support from his family. My wife has been absolutely, unbelievably supportive. She has quietly taken on every single burden that I've handed to her, and there's been a lot. When Boyd first said to me, I'm gonna train and become a mixed martial artist, our oldest child was, I think, around this age. Well, there's two more kids since then, so I want this to be over more than I've wanted anything in a long, long time. <laughs> I've spent an awful lot of my life being afraid. I'm not exactly sure why, but I came to realize that when you're afraid, your world is small. And this past year has taught me that I am capable of taking on and overcoming enormous obstacles. I have zero fear about getting in the cage and fighting. I remember saying this like a long time ago, six months to you, that Boyd shouldn't be in the program, that he should be done. Like, and I was scared for him. I'm not scared for Boyd anymore. Boyd has completely transformed himself. And I can't even tell you how much respect I've got for that guy. He is a warrior. You've got to respect someone who says that, you know, I'm going down this uh, down this road, I'm taking this journey. And then they, then they do it, they follow through with what they're saying. He's a man with conviction, he's a man with courage, and uh, I have to say I admire and respect him for what, uh, what he's done.
referee stopped the fight with seconds to go before the end of the round. It will go down as a loss, but Boyd is anything but defeated. Boyd Sharp dominated his opponent for the entire round, but got caught late and lost his first pro fight. But his performance amazed everyone. That was awesome, buddy. You did great. <laughs> great job, buddy. I worked so hard for the finish on the ground. When we stood up that last time, I tried to look confident, but man, I was so tired. And when he hit me with that one shot, it was like, whoa, where is he? I lost sight of him for a second. And the next thing I knew, I was like on the ground. I think my first reaction was to smile <laughs> because I knew that I'd done well. I, I knew that I was winning the fight and I got caught, which can happen to anybody. Yeah, it's my, my souvenir. Well, you went in and you dominated for 90% of the rounds. You can't ask for much more than that in your first fight. Yeah, that's true. You went okay, in well, one of the things is big so far, but it's not over yet. We got the final fight coming up in just a few minutes. Again, another big thank you so much. If you were to say that Boyd Sharp is going to be a professional fighter, that's about as realistic as watching Doogie Howser MD on television. But if you look at that guy in a day, he is a warrior. And I knew he was going to hold his own in there. So nothing else mattered. It didn't matter if he won or lost. It's a matter he was in there and he deserved to be in there. He earned his place to be in there. <laughs> Thanks so much, Peter. Buddy, I'm telling you, I'm proud of you. That was like, the referee was that close to stopping. Are you serious? He was, he was like, defend yourself, defend yourself. Yeah, that was dominated the whole fight. Yeah. It was yeah. amazing. I'm gonna tell you, I'm proud of him. That was a great performance. Gritty, tough. They're MMA fighters, they're pro MMA fighters. After a year of training, that's what they said they were gonna be, and that's what they did. I mean, you know what? Balls. Nobody else is gonna do that. Most people in the world aren't gonna do that. They're sitting on their coach and they're fat ass doing nothing. These guys, balls. This improbable journey was never just about training for a fight. Boy, sure. Nice to meet you. It was about finding out what you've got. Can you endure the pain? Make the sacrifices? Can you change your life? Can you really feel alive? Peter could only lead the cubes. It was up to each of them to redefine who they are. I think we all have a fight left in us, and I think we're gonna do it. Yeah, somebody said to me, uh, like, they said, uh, I'm, I'm glad this is over. They said, I'm glad for you that this is over. They said, uh, You'd never do it again, would you? And I said, I would cut this thing off and fight tonight if my wife would let me. Because <laughs> yeah. we all had the same thing right here, right? We had the heart, we had to finish it. We had to see it through to the end. To anybody out there that watches this program, whatever your passion is, go for it. Go for it hard with everything you have and you will experience new friends, a new outlook on life, and you will be a better person at the end of the day. You push yourself to limits that are far beyond anything you ever really could have thought possible. Just a different outlook on life. There's never a reason anymore to give up. Nothing I have ever taken on comes close to the mental, physical, emotional strain that this put on me. And this was yet another attempt for me to, to really live. This is the seminal moment of my life. 
the bottom line is that they've taken this journey where they're going to end up being pro MMA fighters, and they've done it. If you can do that in a year, you can do anything. Ashley Welsh trains part-time. She is yet to fight. Nikki Bordage still trains daily and is a full-time nurse. She still hopes to fight. Jock Hiltz lives with his wife and son in Halifax and just secured a partnership with YouTube to produce a web series. He still regrets not being able to finish the program. Sebastian O'Malley continues to live in Halifax with his family. He's scheduled to have his first pro fight. Two other cubes, Robin Smith and Chad Simmons, fought three months after the program ended. Robin fought well, but lost. Chad won. After seeing Steve Goodfellow get knocked out, Morteza Shahi wanted revenge. He got back in the cage for a second time to battle Steve's opponent. He knocked him out. Rick Doyle took a short break to celebrate, but was addicted and decided to keep training. He's scheduled to fight for a second time. Steve Goodfellow took a leave from work, bought a new car and drove it across the United States. He's back training, helping Rick prepare for his fight. Boyd Sharp recovered from his injuries and now spends a lot of time with his kids. His wife took a long vacation to Costa Rica. Deep down, he wants to fight again. <laughs>